Welcome to Cash Talk, the podcast where we delve into the depths of finance, business, and life itself. I'm your host, John Casher, a multi-award winning wealth advisor with a passion for empowering ambitious Australians to confidently achieve financial freedom. Hey everyone, before we get started, this is a quick reminder that everything in this podcast is of a general nature and nothing has been tailored to your personal circumstances. So please seek personal financial advice before acting on this information. And welcome back to Cash Talk. And today I'm joined by Eva. Eva's been with uh, Thriving Well for a few years and uh, started off actually as a postgrad student or yes, just still in uni my last semester. Ah, uh, that's it, that's yeah. it. So <laughs> thanks for joining. It's your first time on Cash Talk. I'm yes. a bit nervous, a excited. Little, nervous and excited, yeah. yeah. Awesome, awesome. So um Eva, you you came after uni or you were in, uh, in yeah. uni like second year? In, in my last semester, so I think th- three years, yeah. Yeah, cool. I'll never yeah. forget it because she actually um, she reached <laughs> out and she asked essentially for a job and um, we gave her a job and she absolutely lapped it up and loved it. And you're now in a, you know, a very important role. Um, she's a power planner in Thriving Wealth, which essentially for people that don't know what a power planner is, a power planner supports a financial advisor in the development of financial plans. So I wanted to get her on here to give you a bit of an insight into what happens behind the scenes in regards to the development of a financial plan so you guys can get a little bit of a understanding about the the work that goes involved and the effort that goes involved to ensure that our clients get the best plan possible to achieve the goals and aspirations. So, Mm -hmm. um, but before I do get into that, Ava, you wanted to be a financial advisor, didn't you? Yes, that was the plan. <laughs> yeah. So um, why para planning and why have you found to love para planning and why not financial advisor for you? I think the main reason was because I can actually like take a client situation and kind of make their goals and dreams kind of achievable. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess I kind of like kind of the back end of things, kind of tweaking the modeling, seeing what works, what doesn't work, what can we do to actually make it work. So I think I enjoy that side of Mm -hmm. financial planning. So more of of the technical side of things and the building of the building of the actual strategies. And it's very, so for people that are are maybe listening who want Mm -hmm. to get into the financial advice industry, there is different career pathways in regards to financial planning. And I I remember having a really good conversation with you Mm -hmm. because you were a bit nervous in speaking to me because she didn't know, like we were obviously, you know, training and developing her to be a financial advisor, but then, you know, she came and we had a good discussion and she says, I want to be a power planner rather than a financial Mm -hmm. planner. And You've absolutely blossomed because now there's, you know, a lot of people that are, are looking up to you in regards to developing their skills in regards to being a really good power planner. So for a lot of the clients and a lot of the prospective um, clients that are looking to work with Thriving Wealth, um, you know, you'll be very much involved in um, your masterpieces um, in, yeah. re- in regards to the plan. Yeah. So. <laughs> Let's get into the plan. So, yep. you know, an advisor will be seeing a client and a client comes to talk about their goals and aspirations mm-hmm. and, you know, very much similar to all the people that are watching and listening, you know, you'll have goals and aspirations if it be that you want to pay off your house in a certain time period, if you want to go on a, uh, annual holidays, if you want to send your kids to private school education. And when you do that, there's a lot of um, moving parts because, it's all dictated on, you know, income and expenditure, mm-hmm. yeah. goals and aspirations, how much risk they need to take on. So how much time do you spend post meeting with the advisor when they kind of uh, they've got all the information from the client in regards to what they want to achieve and their their facts and figures? Mm-hmm. How much time do you spend with the advisor going back and forth in regards to building first and foremost the direction of the plan I'm going to talk about it. Yeah, so once we obviously have all the information on file and the advisor has gone through the strategies they want to provide to the client. One step back. Yeah. One step back. Yeah. With those strategies, Yeah. how much, like, how is the advisor coming up with those strategies, like, in the first place? Because the facts and figures, how is the advisor coming up with those strategies? Yeah, so we put into a modelling tool called XTools mm. that go, we input all your income, expenses, all the goals, Assets, um, liabilities. Yes, yeah. all that. And then based on cash flow and the goals, we then go ahead or the advisor will then 
see what is achievable as far as the strategies, for example, how much to invest into mm. a particular investment, mm. um, contribution amounts, mm. um, and insurance premiums also. Um, so, yeah, that's what the advisor will do. And then... So they're modelling out in this program, yeah. essentially putting all the goals and aspirations in there to see if mm-hmm. those goals and aspirations are high in the sky, yeah. reality, yeah, mm-hmm. and then working towards what's the uh, most confident and certain way to get there. Not Correct. necessarily the quickest way because yeah. the quickest way can essentially increase risk for that person, mm-hmm. yeah. but what's the way that we're going to get there with the most amount of certainty and confidence. Correct. And so they're mapping that out in that modelling. Mm-hmm. Um and then they're giving it to you? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. And so what are you doing with that information and what are you, how are you conversing with the advisor? What's going on there? So once we do get those strategies, we then go ahead and do our research. So the best or not the best, um, we research what is... The most appropriate? The most appropriate That's super right. fund, the most appropriate insurance product. Yeah. Um, and then we get the premiums and all the fees and put it into X tools, that modeling tool that we use. Mm-hmm. And then... We see if obviously everything kind of works with the goals and all the other strategies. So what we're doing essentially, guys, is that the plan is being modelled out strategically, Mm -hmm. making sure that all the strategies that are most appropriate for the client is being recommended. Mm -hmm. They're being uh, back-tested against multiple different strategies with the advisor. The advisor is not just coming up with one. It's like, you know, which kind of um, investment strategy are we going to use versus which superannuation strategy, so on and so forth. Back testing them against that and then coming to Eva and saying, okay, well, Eva, now we need you to back test on which products are most suitable to be the vehicles to achieve those goals. So for example, you might have superannuation strategies, but those strategies need to be run through a superannuation fund. Yeah. Which superannuation fund is right? Is it an Australian super, an ART, a colonial first? Mm-hmm. Which one is right for that particular client? Mm-hmm. And then obviously which insurance is so on and so forth. So you're really getting the strategic overlay and strategies, yeah. then getting the products to suit. Yeah. Yeah, correct. And then after that, it's the most tiresome one, mm-hmm. which a lot of clients don't see. They get the end product okay. is around the documentation of, how that research was taken, how those strategies were decided on, how why were those products were so suitable. Okay. And that gets, gets delivered in what we call a statement of advice or what we like to call a financial plan, but the legal documentation is what they call a statement of advice. Yeah. Now that statement of advice, mm-hmm. once you've been given the strategies and solutions and you've agreed on the products that are most suitable mm-hmm. for the client with the advisor, mm-hmm. um, and that's been rigor- rigorously tested and, and, mm-hmm. and compliance checked, mm-hmm. how... How thorough is that document? Probably over 100 pages. <laughs> yeah. So it's quite a very detailed document. Um, yeah, so. And, and I like to refer to this document as as like if you're building a house, it's like having mm-hmm. the plans for the house. It needs to be documented. Yeah. Because, and it needs to be done thoroughly because mm-hmm. you've got to think about it. Let's say me as an advisor, if something happened, that client should be able to grab that document and understand without speaking to me, why the advice happened, why the strategies are there, why we chose those certain products, why we chose those solutions, why was it better than the other ones that he's tested. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be thorough, Mm -hmm. I believe, for the peace of mind for the client, but also whose eyes are checking it. Is it the client that wants to just read it at night? Mm -hmm. Is it the government that wants to come in and audit the advisor? Mm -hmm. It's a very important document. And actually, at the moment, the government has proposed to get rid of that document yeah. but a thriving wealth it's like okay well what are we going to replace that with because yeah. we still like the elements of the client having the understanding and the consent mm-hmm. on what's going on yeah. so how long would that take you to develop and obviously that's probably different per person yeah correct yeah, depending on the complexity of the, the client scenario it could take in you know, between a day and a day and a half to actually go from a to z so well, from start to finish yeah so we're talking like guys. We're talking like eight to fifteen hours of Pretty work. Pretty much, yeah. Um, that goes into it. Goes into this. So it's quite mm-hmm. thorough, and it's also a really good tool for the advisor once they get that document mm-hmm. to then go step by step with the client for them to understand. See, it's not just about doing the strategies and solutions for our clients. Mm-hmm. It's about them also having the understanding. It's not like a, about yeah. us keeping the secrets. 
Okay. It's about empowering them so that they know. So like if we're implementing, say, one of the strategies in investment bond, mm. you know, that document articulates what it is, how much yeah. we're doing, why we're doing it in mm-hmm. comparison to what what the provider of the investment buying is going to be, what's the benefits, what's the risks of it. Yeah. And the advisor has the ability to walk through with the client mm-hmm. exactly what's going on for that, that person. And so, yeah. yes, you know, ultimately clients need to pay f- mm. for 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 our service, but they're getting a plan to get the most amount of certainty of that plan. Now, it must be really rewarding for you then mm-hmm. when you're then developing these plans, seeing these clients being able to yeah. buy first by vision, um, be able to achieve their goals, mm-hmm. and then you know you've been here long enough to see these yeah. goals actually come to fruition. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And I think the kind of the best part for me is like. If someone's come to us with like their goals and what they want to achieve, and for some reason it's not working, we it's I really like seeing the part where I can somehow make it work for them as well. Mm. So that definitely does feel good to see that. Yeah, because a lot of people and, and even me, like uh, you know, I've got a financial advisor. I know you've got a financial yeah. advisor as well. Sometimes yeah. life changes, but yeah. also as well that we don't know what we can and can't achieve. We just have goals that we want to have. You know, if you're speaking to your husband and you're just like, oh, Mm. hey, Daniel, I just want to do this. And (laughs) can we do it? Can't we do it? Yeah. Yeah. What your job does and what we're able to do is -hmm. is actually be very, very confident in Mm -hmm. can we or can't we? Yeah. You know, if you're going to buy or sell a house, Mm -hmm. should we do it or not? Shouldn't we do it? What's the impact going to be? You know, I want to take time off work because I want to have kids. I want to move part time. Well, What's the impacts? And yeah, it must be really rewarding being able to map that uh, those out. And yeah. you know, sometimes we do need to revise things with clients because clients get um, they also change direction. That's right. You know, and you'll see that I would imagine um, a, a lot of times where mm-hmm. a client way maybe might go down a certain pathway and then come yeah. twelve months, two years down mm-hmm. the track, they want to go down a different pathway, and then you're going back and amending a plan. So, is this plan? A forever plan or how does this work, Ava? No. Yeah, so it's not a, yeah, not a forever plan. So we obviously have that initial plan and then every 12 months we then create a new one, mm-hmm. um, obviously based if based on if like something's changed in the client situation, their goals have changed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're definitely reviewing that every 12 months mm-hmm. to make sure that mm-hmm. it um, it's in line with the client's mm-hmm. goals. And by doing it every 12 months, guys, you got to think about it. Like some of the goals that we're trying to achieve are, say, 10 years in the making or 15 mm-hmm. years or 20 years. The initial plan kind of gets you on the direction. It usually is the one that fixes most of the, the initial problems that we see. But as life changes and direction changes, we need to be making sure that we have a 12-month plan. So mm-hmm. when we do modeling, it's long-term modeling. When we do planning, it's 12-month planning. And then it's about regular checking along the way to ensure that that plan comes to fruition. Mm-hmm. Because there's so many people that have diet plans but don't stick to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or have different goals. You know, I've come back mm-hmm. from overseas and I wanted to get, you know, big and strong and, mm-hmm. and feel stronger. Now I want to get leaner and fitter. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like goals change even in a certain thing. So my plan needs to change with my trainers yeah. around how are we going to differentiate and then and then mm-hmm. track that. So um, a very, very important role that you have and, and I think a lot of people that are listening and viewing, it's a really good insight for you to understand what happens in the background yeah. and the fulfillment that we get from seeing these plans come to fruition. And I've been so grateful to do this over two decades where I've seen so many people's lives come to fruition. And I was only talking with my colleagues just before around a client that was with us for 10 years and a plan that we had. I remember them coming to me and they wanted $70,000 worth of income. Mm -hmm. And we worked that out that they need about $1.4 million in investment assets outside of their family home. And they've recently retired and they've got about $2.2 million. So they're able to not only have the comfortable retirement that we aimed for, but they're also now really got the travel bug. So, yeah. you know, they're able to do much more comfortable holidays now in retirement that they became accustomed to on the lead up to retirement as well too. So, you know, one of the big things is that was a plan that was done 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. They stuck to it. We amended it. We adjusted it. Things happened. I, I'm not going to go through all of the different things that changed in this person's <laughs> lives, but we done 10 different plans, yeah. you know, not 
totally different, more adjustment plans to ensure that they are where they are today, let alone the economic effects and the investment yeah. environments. You know, you think about interest rates, how much they've changed, but mm-hmm. think about tax changes and law changes and all of this stuff. And and so, you know, working with an, the advisor and obviously their associate, mm-hmm. uh, associate or their para planner, making sure that those plans are coming to fruition, being documented. So when they're documented, we know what we can we, we need to tick off yeah, and what we need to make sure that happens and happen with certainty and confidence because we don't want to go through in life and be like, oh, we roughly did what we wanted in life. Yeah. You know, we want to look back and be like, we sure. did what we what we planned to achieve because it, it is so much more fulfilling in life. Uh, yeah, makes sense. So Eva, um, thanks for jumping on to your first podcast. Thanks okay. for I know you're a bit nervous <laughs> today, um, but she's an integral part of Thriving Wealth and I've, I've loved her um, being here and and, and um, I look forward to seeing you flourish. But for all the viewers and listeners, that was a really good insight into what happens in the background. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Yeah.